The number one reason why people want to keep Baptist in their church name is because of association, isn't it? Um, because they, it's, the, it's the, the association that people um, give to that name. Um, the association the name has to, to most people. Basically, what people think about that name. Isn't that what association is? It's basically what people think of your name and the impression that it gives uh, when you say that name to people. And somebody might say, well, you know, doesn't it help, doesn't it help people to get an idea of what you believe if you call yourself a Baptist church? Well, you know, I think you can argue for that or against that because people will say, well, don't you want to give at least people a, a ballpark idea of what you believe when they hear your name? But, you know, my question is, you know, what does Baptist even mean these days? Because if it's, if it's dependent on what people think or the impression that people get when they hear the name Baptist, you know, what does it even mean? Doesn't it depend then on where you live, you know, your culture, what you've grown up to, to, to learn what Baptist means and, and your association with Baptist and Baptists that you know? So it's really a, a relative term, isn't it? I mean, most people that I speak to when I, when I go out soul winning and I just speak to people and when, when we used to go to Lighthouse Baptist Church and say we were from a Baptist church, what, what was their first impression? When I spoke to people, the first impression was that it was a denomination, that it was a Protestant denomination and we were part of the Protestant line of churches and, and as soon as you said to them, we were from a Baptist church, oh, you're part of the Baptist denomination. So this idea of naming your church based on association, will that give people an idea of what you believe? Does it? Because it depends on what they believe about Baptist is, is going to change what impression it gives them. And you know, that was one of, one of the, uh, th this is not the reason why I went with the church in Punchbowl, but you know, that was one of the reasons why I sort of swayed away from it. Because I wanted a, a church name where when I said to somebody, you know, we're from the church in Punchbowl, it sounded independent. It didn't sound like we were part of a denomination or part of a religious organization or part of some Baptist convention or uh, anything like that. I wanted a name where it was clear we are not part of any organization. We are uh, independent. And you know, that's, that's what people think when they hear the church in Punchbowl, right? Because when you go out soul winning and you tell them you're from the church in Punchbowl, they ask you, what denomination are you a part of? So that just proves to me that when they hear that name, they think it's independent because they don't realize what denomination we're part of. And then we can explain to them, we can educate them and say, you know, we're not part of a denomination. We're an independent church. We govern ourselves. You know, we don't answer to any uh, board um, in another place. And, um, you know, that's what I like about it. That's one, one thing I like about it. And, you know, we're not hiding our denomination like some other churches are like Assemblies of God churches because they are part of a denomination and they, they want a name that sounds independent but they're not actually independent because they are actually part of a denomination. So we don't have that problem. Because we are independent, it's fine for our name to sound independent. You know, um, a neighbour just, just around the corner, uh, he, he uh, got one of our tracks and he um, uh, sent me an email and he asked the question, you know, I'm, I'm Assemblies of God, what denomination are you? So that just goes to show that we, you know, our name sounds independent. And, you know, I had to, I had to explain to him, you know, we're not part of a denomination. You know, because he kept trying to push me saying like, what denomination are you a part of? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not dodging your question. We're not part of a denomination. We're, we're independent. And it, it, it's almost like he couldn't get it out of his head that every church must be part of a, a part of a denomination. And then when he found out we were sent out from Lighthouse Baptist Church. Ah, that's the denomination you're a part of. You're part of the Baptist denomination. And, you know, this is why I just want to try as, as hard as possible to move away from this thought that we're part of this, this group. And even when people refer to independent Baptist churches, what does that even mean? We're independent. You know, it's, it, what, what Lighthouse does has nothing to do with what we do here. What Southland does has nothing to do with what Lighthouse does. You know, we, we all are just following the Bible as independent, uh, fundamental churches. So am I, you know, people say, well, are you trying to hide what you believe? Are you trying to, you know, mislead people and make them, uh, you know, uh, not know what you actually believe? Well, no, because if you've actually gone to our website, and probably all of you here have gone to our website, when you read our website and you go through the information, does it sound like we're trying to hide what we believe? We're not trying to hide what we believe. 
We're just trying to create our own identity. You know, we want to create our own identity. We want people to know what we believe and who we are based on who we actually are and who, what we actually believe, not what other people think we are and what their impression of a, of a group name is. So, you know, I'm not tr we're not trying to hide what we believe. You know, our website is very clear. It's got a lot of information on there about what we believe. And we put all the preaching up there. We put all the sermons up there. I even put all my sermon outlines up there. So people are clear what we believe and why we believe it. And, you know, to me, that's safer than any preconceived idea, isn't it? In my opinion, you know, for somebody to actually find out what we believe because of what we believe, is safer than somebody assuming that they know what we believe based on a name that we decide to keep and we, we decide to continue. And you know, people, people make a big deal about church names, don't they? I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a big deal to some people to the point where you know, they condemn others for not following their own conventions. But you know, why, why is it such a big deal what your church name is? You know, is, is it a big deal what your church name is? You know, isn't, isn't it more important, you know, who you actually are, not what you're called? Isn't it more important what you're actually doing? Because, you know, we live in a day where people glorify names, right? And they glorify qualifications. You know, they want to know, you know, what qualifications you have, what title you have, you know, what, uh, what cert certifications you have. Um, you know, we don't, need, we don't need qualifications and certifications of men. You know, I'm happy just knowing that I'm doing, doing the will of God and I have God's blessing in my life. Um, so, you know, I would really like, you know, what we do as a church to define us and not by the name that we are known by. But, you know, being called Baptist, you know, keeping Baptist in your name, it can work in your favor, can't it? There are pros and cons. Um, you know, we've gone through some of the cons, but there are some pros as well. I mean, if people have a good association and the true the right position of what a Baptist should believe, then, you know, they're going to think well of you. They're not going to think badly of you. So there, there can be a good association. If there's a bad association, then it doesn't work in your favor. If there's a good association, then it, then it might work in your favor. You know, some people will say, well, you know, if they're looking for a church. They might look for an independent Baptist church and they may not find you on the internet, um, which is true. You know, if you are, you know, if you call your church a Baptist church and somebody's looking for a Baptist church, it might be easier for them to find you on a Google search or anything like that. The funny thing is that because I've got blog posts on our website with Lighthouse Baptist Church in it, when you type soul winning Baptist church NSW, we're on the first page of Google. So, you know, that just goes to show you don't have to have a name that's called Baptist church to be found with the Baptist keyword. Uh, so people are finding us anyway even though um, we're not called such and such Baptist church. But you know, the thing is, I find today that the association with Baptist churches these days is not generally good. Well, you know, not, not that I would say not generally good, but it's, it's, it's going further and further away from what we believe um, in this church here. And let me just list a few for you. Um, you know, number one, lip service to the King James Bible meaning where they, they preach and they teach that they're holding the Word of God, that you read the Word of God, that they're preaching the Word of God. And then when you ask them, is that really the Word of God? No. You have to go back to the originals. You have to go back to the Greek and Hebrew. Only the originals contain the Word of God. Um, if you want more about that topic, you can listen to my sermon, The Word of God. So they give lip service to the King James Bible. They don't actually believe that the Bible they hold in their hand is the perfect Word of God. What about this repent of your sins uh, work salvation heresy that a lot of independent Baptist churches are preaching these days. They don't just preach salvation by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. They preach that you have to turn from your sins or forsake your sins, um, turn over a new leaf, repent of your sins in order to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ um, for salvation and that is nothing more than works. So do I want to be associated with work salvation? No. Well, what's another thing that people think about, uh, you know, Baptist churches these days? That they're American. That, you know, that they, that they have American traditions, American bishop, everything American about them. You know, maybe they come here and they get shocked, right? Because I'm not American and I look Chinese, I sound Australian. Uh, who knows? <laughs> but, you know, American. What about, what about um, in Baptist churches, preacher worship? You know, worshipping the preacher as though he's above everyone in the congregation. Now, do I rule in the house of God? Yes. 
But am I more valuable than you? Do I, am I more anointed than you? Am I uh, lifted above as though, I, you know, this, uh, this the, the, the laity and the, what do they say, the layman and the clergy? No, but that happens a lot in independent Baptist churches. Raising up the preacher above everybody else as, a, as though he's the anointed prophet or king. You know, what about quote-unquote hard preaching in Baptist churches where, you know, I believe in hard preaching where you preach the truths of the Bible, but hard preaching is not when you beat up on God's people, where, where somebody needs help, where somebody's wrong on a doctrine or they're wrong on something and then you just beat up on them as though they're like an unbeliever or as though they're an enemy of God. You know, that's, that's one thing that independent Baptist churches are really known for and where people get burnt. Um, and that's something I don't want to be associated with because I don't believe that's the way God wants us to treat our fellow believers in Jesus Christ. Um, you know, what about the pre-tribulation rapture? That's something that you would think of when you go to an independent Baptist church, that the rapture is before the tribulation. Um, and that's not something we believe here. In, in fact, it's so obvious in the Bible that the rapture is after the tribulation. It's hard to think why anyone would believe that but that's not something we believe but if we call ourselves a Baptist church that might be what people think we believe um, you know what about worshiping the false Israel you know worshiping uh, the nation of Israel as it exists today and that's the documentary we're, gonna, we're going to be watching tonight to learn more about that but these people that you know which are they call themselves Jews but are not but are the synagogue of Satan this is one thing that independent Baptist churches are really well known for. Is that something I want to be associated with when I don't believe that? When I believe it's wrong to worship the unbelieving, uh, Christ-rejecting nation of Israel. Um, a couple of other things. You know, what about altar calls? We don't have altar calls. You know, cursing uh, and blessing for obedience. You know, if you don't tithe, if you don't give 10% of your money, God's going to curse you. You're robbing God. I don't believe that. What about the fact that church is, they believe that church is a formal sit-through presentation and not just this, you know, gathering of God's family here um, like we have today. You know, that's, that's not what we are. People might think that if we call ourselves about this church. Uh, what about the fact that they separate off kids? They have kids' church and kids' creche and they separate everyone into their little Bible study groups. You know, we don't believe that. We believe church is the body of Jesus Christ and that's why we're together here. That's why we have the children here. You know, I don't mind if babies are crying and babies are walking up and down. Hey, that's a blessing to me that they're here and they're listening to the preaching. They're part of the gathering here. That's great. And you think that they're not paying attention, but you guys that have little kids, you know later on they play church at home. They, they, they copy me or they copy the song leader or whatever because they are soaking in what's going on. Because Simon, you might think he's not soaking in what's going on here. He might be playing around on his chair and whatever. But then later on, he, he's copying exactly what happened in church that morning. So he is. They are soaking things up. And that's why we want them here. We want them to be part of the preaching. We want them to learn. But not only that, we want them to be part of church. I mean, if church is the body, it's the gathering, I don't want to split them off, put them in another room, put them in another building, um, and then take people away. What else? Rules and standards that are preached as commandments. That's something independent Baptists are really famous for. Um, preaching their opinions, preaching things that can't be proven from the Bible, and preaching it as the commandments of God. You know, some people might think you're Baptist Union if you call it a Baptist church. They might think you're part of the union. They might think you're Baptist reformed, that you're, you know, a Protestant version of baptism. So, you know, there's a couple of reasons why, you know, the association isn't always good. So when it comes to association and how people think of the name Baptist, there are pros and cons, aren't there? It can either work in your favor if it's a positive association, or it can work not in your favor if it's a negative association. And there are many reasons why maybe you don't really want to associate with independent Baptist as a whole. But let's just go to uh, Matthew. Matthew 7. Jesus says here in verse 13, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Now, obviously, this verse is talking about salvation. You know, many people believing in the wrong way to salvation. Few people believing in the right way to salvation. So I'm not saying that those that disagree with me are not going to heaven. 
Well, the principle is there that the majority is rarely right. The majority is normally wrong. Many there be which go in there at. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Uh, let's look at another verse here in uh, Exodus. 23 verse 2 it says here one of the commandments thou shalt not follow a multitude thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment so what is this verse talking about this verse is saying you know don't follow the crowd to do something wrong and don't let the crowd alter righteous judgment right don't don't judge wrongly because the multitude is making you decline to, to do evil. So what's the principle there? That we don't follow the many. We don't follow the crowd. We don't care what the crowd is doing. That's not going to change our opinion or how we righteously judge things. So let me ask you, isn't that the problem with naming your church a certain way because of association? Because it's what most people think about the name Baptist? Why would I want to go with what the majority of what people think about something because eventually that majority is going to go wrong aren't they so that i'm not saying that that's a you know that's it's a sinful reason to name your church for that reason but what i'm saying is that it doesn't seem to be a wise reason to name your church for that reason if you're naming it because of what the majority of people think about something because eventually that majority opinion is going to change it's going to go astray and you know we shouldn't base any decision in our life based on what people think, right? I mean, if we, if we did things in life because of what people thought or what their impression was, you know, we, we would be long gone from following the Bible, from following the Word of God. So not only do I think it's a bad reason to name your church uh, for that reason, it's just a bad reason to do anything in life. So that's, that's number one reason, the association that people have with the Baptist name or with a certain name that you name a church. 